<laughs> Jim Sterling kicked off a firestorm, as he does, a couple of weeks ago when he reviewed Ukulele, the latest Kickstarter project by way of Playtonic. If you remember, Ukulele is the brainchild of many former Rare employees who brought us the likes of Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong Country 64. They were beloved back in their day, and almost single-handedly created the 3D platforming genre. Unfortunately, the 3D platformer has died a slow and rather quiet death since the days of the PlayStation 2. But here were those developers again, notably Steve Mayles, Chris Sutherland, Gavin Price, and Grant Kirkhope escaping from whatever broom closet Microsoft had locked them in after they purchased Rare and ready to revive my favorite genre. That is, more or less, the groundwork that formed the Kickstarter campaign for Ukulele. The second coming of Christ, they could do no wrong, and Ukulele would usher in a new era of... 2 out of 10. Jim Sterling gave the game a 2 out of 10. He said the game is everything wrong about the formative years of 3D platforming, and it somehow retained none of what made the genre's highlights endure. Ukulele is, in a word, rubbish. His site was hit by a DDoS attack, fans were so angry. But you know what? He's absolutely right. Ukulele is by far the worst game of 2017 so far. How did this crowdfunding darling go so wrong? Well, for that, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning. Back in 2012, a group of former Rare developers announced they were working on a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie under the working name Mingo Jongo. The project quickly evaporated and nothing was heard from it again for three years. Then, in February 2015, a larger group of ex-Rare employees, led by Mayo, Sutherland, and Price, came together to form a new development company, Playtonic Games. They soon announced their first project, yes, you guessed it, a Banjo-Kazooie spiritual successor tentatively called Project Ukulele. Fast forward a few months later to May 1st, and Playtonic announced Ukulele on Kickstarter. The campaign was bursting at the seams with Nintendo 64 and Rareware nostalgia. I think the opening paragraph really sets the tone for the campaign. Ukulele is an all-new 3D platformer from the creative talent behind the Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong Country games. We've come together to form Playtonic Games and create a spiritual successor to our most cherished work from the past. That's exactly what the campaign promised. Another Banjo-Kazooie game, only with a slightly different coat of paint. In fact, the N64 duo are mentioned no less than 13 times throughout the Kickstarter page alone, so if there's any confusion as to what ukulele would be like, that's... that's on you. From the sound of things, the team at Playtonic never considered creating anything other than a spiritual successor, complete with the buddy characters, colorful cartoon world, and 3D platforming. The pitch hits all of those notes, starting with Yuka and Laylee themselves. The Kickstarter page goes out of its way to say that artist Steve Mayles has captured the spirit of our past heroes twice. It then talks about unlockable platforming moves and a soundtrack by David Wise and Grant Kirkhope of Donkey Kong Country and Banjo-Kazooie fame, of course. Then it goes on to talk about the collectibles, because as well as being a 3D platformer, Ukulele is also a collectathon. Every collectible type on our new game will expand gameplay in a meaningful way. Yes, we employ the man responsible for DK64's myriad of trinkets, but we've had a stern word. Our main collectible, Pages, are used to unlock and expand new worlds in Ukulele. That's where the innovation in Ukulele was supposed to be. There are collectibles, like in many other platformers, but here you wouldn't just be collecting them for the sake of it. Collecting objects, pages in this case, would allow you to create new areas of the world to explore, and collecting quills would let you buy new moves. Beyond that, there's not all that much to say about the rest of the Kickstarter page. Mostly it just elaborates further on what was already mentioned and some details about platforms. Of course, the Nintendo Switch has come out since the Kickstarter campaign, which meant the Wii U version had to be cancelled so Playtonic could work on that version, which is due for release at some later date. There were also a plethora of stretch goals on offer, every single one of which was met with cash to spare. Some of these stretch goals further expand on the Banjo-Kazooie angle, like pre-boss fight quiz game shows, minecart levels, an N64 shader mode, and even a ukulele rap by Kirkhope, which is... certainly interesting.
The entire team at the time of the Kickstarter campaign was made up of ex-Rare employees, with one notable exception. Andy Robinson, a former games journalist at CBG and Edge, was brought in as lead writer and editor on the project. It was said at the time that his role was critical as the one outsider. The one man who could bring the team into a more modern mindset, as well as creating an interesting story with witty dialogue. Despite this, and promise that the game would try to innovate, it was clear that Ukulele was first and foremost a return to old school platforming and anything else would come second. In that regard, the Ukulele Kickstarter campaign might be one of the most accurate representations of a final game out there, with the exception of Shantae Half Genie Hero. Even Jim Sterling concedes that point, saying in his review, if there's one thing that could be said in Ukulele's favor, it's that Platonic absolutely nailed the creation of a late 90s 3D mascot platformer. Platonic delivered an almost exact copy of what they promised, a true Banjo-Kazooie sequel. Playing Ukulele feels like you're playing the true third Banjo-Kazooie game. Assuming the real true third Banjo-Kazooie game played like a heavy, confusing, annoying mess that you can't bear to play for more than 30 minutes at a time. Ukulele has almost everything the Kickstarter campaign promised. Funny enough, the one thing that's missing is the one way the developers claim they're trying to be innovative. The feature of using pages to expand worlds just doesn't work the way they talked about. It was always evident that this was the one area of their pitch that they didn't quite have nailed down yet, speaking only vaguely about how you could expand worlds like a book. In reality, all you really do is spend those pages like any other form of currency in any other game to enter previously locked sections of the game world, and you need 100 of the bastards before you're even allowed to fight the final boss. That's not exactly what I would call innovative to say the least. But the rest of it is all there. The 3D platforming part is pretty obvious, but the other things like the humor, the collectathons, the minecart levels, special moves, and the fantastic soundtrack are all present as well. Platonic set out to recreate Banjo Kazooie specifically, and at that, they did a pretty admirable job. This is exactly the game they pitched, so why doesn't it actually feel like a third Banjo Kazooie game? Why does it feel so broken and awful to play. Nostalgia is little more than a pair of rose-tinted glasses. We remember things from our youth differently than how they actually were. Usually we overemphasize the positive aspects and forget the bad stuff. That's never been more obvious than in this period of gaming, and even more so on Kickstarter where almost every project is either a spiritual successor, sequel to a long-dead franchise, or a reimagining of a classic series, and Ukulele hammers that point home far better than many other examples. Many people love the Banjo Kazooie games, but take off those nostalgia goggles and you're bound to find a few cracks. The camera was hard to control, the jumping physics were just a little bit off, the unclear nature of where you're supposed to go and when left you feeling confused, and the gibberish dialogue gets real annoying real fast. When you don't or can't take off those glasses, well, you end up with ukulele. Gaming has advanced so far since Rare was at its prime that everything taken over from those games is only magnified. The janky camera has become an untenable beast with a mind of its own, going out of its way to fling your view all over the planet. The slightly too heavy jumping physics have become two cinder blocks tied to your feet that drag you down whenever you try to jump. The gibberish voice acting... Christ, I, I can't listen to more than two lines of it without my ears actively hurting. <laughs> All of the bad is magnified to the point where the handful of good stuff, like the soundtrack or the graphics, are completely overshadowed. Fifteen years of progression in game design has been completely ignored, and it shows big time. This is what the fans and backers wanted, at least that's what they think they wanted. Going back to the gibberish voice acting for several moments, that's actually a case of backer input. Lead designer Chris Sutherland said in an interview that they wanted to have regular voice acting, but when they floated the idea, the backers said they wanted the gibberish back. That particular style of voice acting was only ever present because hardware demands of the Nintendo 64's cartridges didn't have enough space for full voice acting. 
at least not for Banjo-Kazooie. So the compressed, small files of random gibberish from Sutherland were used instead. On the other hand, the gibberish in Banjo-Kazooie was annoying, but tolerable. Here, the grunts are chopped up and used in such a sporadic way, it loses all of the rhythm and flow Banjo-Kazooie had, and just sounds like random loud noises. Plus, the hacking coughs and grunts are just disgusting. Yuka in particular sounds like a perverted old man. <laughs> Fans wanted the gibberish from Banjo-Kazooie, and they trusted Platonic to deliver exactly that, not whatever this mess we got is supposed to be. That's just a case of a developer not being in their prime anymore, I'm sorry to say. It makes for an interesting discussion. If Ukulele wasn't crowdfunded and was still somehow made exactly as it is now, would it still be met with the same reaction? Ukulele was sold as a second coming of the 3D platformer, from the people who made the most popular 3D platformers at the time. It's hard to imagine that they wouldn't have announced this game with those same talking points, allowing it to sell on its own merits. But then, there wouldn't have been the expectations from the backers, just general hype of the release. Recently, we've seen Snake Pass, another 90s era 3D platformer with actual innovation, come out of nowhere, and it's gotten a much kinder reception. It's a better game, frankly, but with its unknown indie developer, it's incredible that it's overtaken the folks from Rare and one of the biggest crowdfunding video games ever. It's hard to tell how much of the disappointment is from crowdfunding specifically, and how much is just from inflated expectations. It's tough to guess where Platonic will go from here. They'll likely continue making other spiritual successors, either Ukulele 2 or Jet Force Gemini, Conker's Bad Fur Day, or Goldeneye. Whether or not they'll turn to Kickstarter again is a whole other question unto itself. It'll depend on how much money Ukulele brings in, how much their reputation was hurt by the mixed reviews, how much this John Tron nonsense will hurt them with the fans, and, of course, whether or not they even want to crowdfund again if they had the choice. In the end, all of these factors, the hype, the promised revival of a dead franchise and genre by its pioneers, the refusal by Platonic themselves to not make anything other than a one-for-one -one copy of the original game, and possibly caving to backer demand and possibly just not being all that good anymore, has formed the perfect storm. It's easy to say with hindsight, but... Looking at it now, it seems pretty obvious that there's just no way people weren't going to be disappointed. And make no mistake, I say this as the biggest 3D platforming fan in the world. Ukulele is a bad game. The question now turns to, what does this mean for Kickstarter? It's had more high-profile failures like this, Mighty No. 9, the Red Ash debacle, Star Citizen, and the Maxim Passion and... thing than it has actual successful games. At least, that's how the public sees it. They don't know or care that games like Kentucky Route Zero, Undertale, FTL Faster Than Light, Divinity Original Sin, or Pillars of Eternity were all funded through Kickstarter. Most people only see those high-profile failures. But before you go putting all your hopes on Bloodstained and Shenmue 3, remember what made Ukulele and Mighty No. 9 so disappointing in the first place. As for the 3D platformer, uh, well, this might be the final nail in the coffin. Oh sure, there will be other smaller ones like the recent Snake Pass or Unbox, as well as crowdfunded ones like A Hat in Time or Lobo Destroyo, but you can forget about another big scale 3D platformer like this one on Kickstarter or from any big developers or publishers from now on. Uh, bless her soul and may she rest in peace.